Hey T Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf and this is a very impromptu, not planned uh, video. I just had to come into the studio, switch on the cameras because I've just tasted this tea here for the first time since it arrived and my mind is, is, is firing on all cylinders. So I thought, you know what, let's just hit record and start. We don't know exactly where this is gonna go, but let me give you the background and let me tell you a little bit why I'm so excited. So, these little nuggets of joy have come in. Lao Cha To, for those of you who don't know what Lao Cha To is, Lao Cha To is a ripened pua tea, and during the ripening process, during the piling process of the tea, um, naturally there, there are clumps which form, these sort of uh, called tea heads, these clumps are formed from extra mycelium activity that just bonds all of the tea together in these super concentrated nuggets of joy called Lao Cha To. And last year we released our roasted Lao Cha To called Nug Bake and we thought due to its popularity, due to the fact that we love it so much that we were going to do a Nug Bake again this year in 2021. And so I found this 2012 Lao Cha To. So the scope on this is season spring 2012, cultivar Da Ye Zhong. The origin is from Bulang um, in Yunnan in China. The picking and processing is the same as always with ripe tea. So picking the tea, treating it like a raw tea and then fermenting it in this wet pile process and then removing these very prized tea heads, yes, that's what they're called, old tea heads, Lao Cha To, um, from the pile before you collect all the rest of it, and these are reserved um, for your extra special ripened tea. Elevation on this, I'm not sure, but it'll be somewhere in the region of 1,000, 1,200 meters. Again, as I said, I haven't prepared for this at all. And so the idea, when I tasted this uh, Lao Cha To, I really loved it. I thought it was very, very fruity, really, really uh, interesting and different from the Nug Bake, but the idea was to get it in and to roast it uh, in our roaster in London and make another Nug Bake. But I have just tasted this tea with Celine and both of us just after three infusions just went a bit nuts and said, no, 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 this has to be tasted by itself. We're gonna be calling this Nugberry. This is just a name that we coined literally just now because uh, of the taste of it. I am very, very excited. I'm super excited to do a proper 10 step tasting. That's why I wanted to pause, you can see, what uh, we've uh, been drinking in this Tiny Guy One, which is normally the way that we roll, we, we taste in this Tiny Guy One just to sort of get a feel for it um, before the roasting phase, but we stopped it. Cameras are on. We're gonna do a 10 step tasting now. I'm very, very excited. Let's warm up this Gen Shui pot. <sighs> Was not planning on shooting a video today, but hey. That's the joy of having this set up. I can just come in, switch on the cameras and go. I'm probably not prepared yet. I don't have a tea pet. Um, so it's, it might be a bit chaotic, but you know, you don't mind chaos. I know that. So here we go. Let's dive into this. Try and calm down a little bit. Let's take a look at these little nugs. So tentatively, we're calling this Nugberry. Super fruity from the tasting that we just did. And we only did a few infusions. My mouth is still zinging from it. Um, beautiful, uh, gnarly, like carob, uh, chestnut and carob brown uh, nugs with all of this clumping together that's naturally from, as I said, the fermentation phase, the, the ripening phase when you're piling it, the mycelium just sort of grabs and, and, and twists and, and congeals all of these leaves together to make these incredible nugs that seem to go on forever. At least it did for nug bake. Right, let's get our nose into these dry leaves. I'm not gonna use all of these because these are quite heavy. They're probably a few grams each. So I'm gonna put in, let's say three of these, save those. <sighs> okay, smell of the dry leaf of tentatively called nug berry. and you are immediately hit with berries. I'm getting blueberries, black currants, blackberries, cherries. <sighs> yeah, cherry, black cherry, Morello cherry. Just 
an intense bouquet of fruit. And I do remember when we sampled the tea uh, in selecting it uh, last year that it was very fruity. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a nice, interesting, fruity nug bake. But I, I just don't want to mess with it. I just do not want to mess with it. And I am getting a, um, a creaminess as well, like um, a sort of slightly like uh, yeasty, like rising dough. So yeah, rising dough, um, that smell that comes from the yeast sort of activating and all of those fruits. I mean, the fruit is just remarkable on it. Right, I'm gonna use the water in this Gongdao Bay. I don't even know how much water I've got available, so I'm being a little bit cautious. I, I really just wanted to, to, I was so excited with Selena. I was like, no, no, let's get in now. I'm, I'm gonna record a video. Um, because normally we do a 10 step tasting um, and I wanted to, uh, to get my initial thoughts to you without, um, without going through the, f the full session with Celine. So poor Celine's salivating back uh, <laughs> in, the, in the kitchen, um, just sort of uh, waiting for the rest of this. Okay, let's have a sniff. It's amazing. It's an amazing smell. For those of you who love Gem Juice Outlaw, for those of you who loved Bling Rock Kingpin, for those of you who love those fruitier um, black currant and berry notes in a, a, a poor tea, a ripened poor tea, mark my words, this tea is just over the top. I mean, what am I getting? Red grapes, black cherries, blueberries, and then uh, an incredible creamy, creamy finish to the smell. <sighs> Certain spice like, like ginger biscuits. Yeah, ginger biscuits, but there's a milkiness, a creaminess to it. But with it, that extra funk. Um, so we had that rising dough yeasty note, but I think it's more like a, Cheesecake, yeah. Cheesecake, imagine a cheesecake with a ginger biscuit base and then drizzled on top is all of these cooked down berries like black cherry, blueberries, black currants if it's cooked down and sweetened like cassis. So berry cheesecake. Oh, my mouth is watering. It is one of the most incredible ripe tea smells I've ever experienced. It's so, so fruity and so creamy with zero funk, like zero negative funk, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, super excited, super excited. And I brought out the gen tray. So when we uh, did our tasting just before, um, are very short and tasting, but just before these are just opening up. Um, we did it in porcelain, but I wanted to taste it in Gen Shui. Here we go. Um, what am I doing? Gong Dabai first. Calm down. Calm down, Don. Uh, with the tea heads, you need to give that first infusion a bit more because you know it's it's all sort of tangled up and needs to sort of start to extract. But then as you uh, start to infuse, you can then, you know, uh, the, so the first infusion is gonna be longer than the second infusion, and then you can ramp it up as normal. Um, I really should show you the color of this liquor though as well. Uh, do I have a Gong Dao Bei? Oh, you see, did not plan this. Oh, I do, I have a Gong Dao Bei. It may not be the cleanest Gong Dao Bei in the world. I mean, as in, it might have water stains. It is clean, but it... Right, so you can see first infusion is light. Get ready to see how much darker this gets. So we're not even gonna judge the uh, color of the liquor on the first infusion. There's no point, right? Let's just get our initial tasting. This is almost like a rinse. Okay, cheers, everybody. It may be light but it's still rocking. Um, texture, 
thick, soft, creamy, almost oily, moving to a lovely, com a lovely switch up from creamy to clean. Mm. Oh, this is going to be a daily driver. I can tell you that right now. Mm. Oh, sweet berry coming through and it's just like starting, but it's there. It's, it's sweet. It's cherries again, yeah, like deep Morello cherries. All of the aromatics are coming through. I'm getting that cheesecake, sort of creamy, vanillary cheesecake note. Mm. Let's uh, check the temperature of this water. Take a look at these glistening nugs. They are, they're still solid. They are still solid. So, you know, we need to give this some time. Next infusion, I'll probably brew just as long. So the last Lao Chateau that we got was, um, I believe 2010 was the year. So this is a uh, 2012, so seven years old. No, eight years old, no, nine years old. Mm, yeah, I'm losing it. Um, I keep forgetting that we're in 2021, but I didn't think we were back in 2019. Nine year old. I think that first infusion, the clay wasn't totally hot. So let's uh, keep it calm, keep it calm. And we'll pour it directly in here just so that you can see the color. And then we'll go with the um, Gong Da Bei. So how are you all doing out there? As I said, it's a Thursday here and I just, I'm, I'm not normally, I normally shoot on a Friday, but uh, I thought, nah, it's gotta be done right now. Um, and it's kind of nice because it means that I don't have to, we don't have to go through the whole baking phase. Obviously we will try to get a nug bake back in um, and I'll, I'll be sourcing more Lao Chato in order to do that. But decision was made very quickly after just uh, sort of one to two infusions um, a few minutes ago that there's no way that we can touch this. This has to be tasted as it is. It needs to be experienced in all its fruity glory. Yeah, now we're getting a nicer, deeper color and this will get darker and darker and darker. So now we've got this sort of beautiful uh, uh, burnt orange sunset, deep dusk sunset orange color. Oh, the smell of this. I'm so excited for you ripe tea heads out there. Uh, that sounds a bit weird. Ripened tea lovers out there, uh, lovers of the tea head uh, to try this because that smell is just incredible. Berries, a little bit of uh, baked bread. So that yeastiness is that yeasty rising dough is, has a little bit of a, a baked bread note. I mean, what's not to love about baked bread smells, uh, berries, compots, like stewed down berries and jams, cheesecakes, ginger biscuits. What's not to love about that? Still soft, still creamy, still smooth, moving to clean, but the texture has thickened up. It's now a very thick tea feels like my, my tongue is like growing in my mouth. Mm. Now let's talk about taste. And it is still just opening. Cherries, for sure. Cassis, sweetened black currants into, in that syrup. Um, it's just berries, blueberries. I, you know, I'm, I'm starting to sort of um, merge them all together in my head, but all of those sweet fruit berries, uh, dark blue, rich in anthocyanins. Um, and then creamy, almost buttery, like almost like a, it's 
sort of heading into the croissant arena, like a, a baked croissant. If you tear open a freshly baked croissant and you smell that, that beautiful, buttery, yeasty, nothing like it, right? That, that smell, it has that as this beautiful, velvety interplay against all of that fruit. This is like a, the ultimate breakfast tea. You know, I can imagine this just sort of mimics that sort of cherry jams spread on like uh, on a croissant or, um, or again, like dessert, like cheesecake. Oh, and I know from experience with Lao Chateau that this is gonna give lots and lots of infusions. This is infusion number three. And we are right at the beginning of this journey, even though it is delighting already. Ooh, getting some of that swirl on top of the liquor. You know that swirl that you get? The, the, the mist that, that comes off um, a liquor? Oh, I want to show you that. So I love about ripe pu'ers as well. Let's see if we can, um, what do we do? Everything's impromptu today, but I'm going with it. Uh, right, I'm gonna pour this in here and see if we can get some of that swirl developing and I'll see if I can pull a camera around. You can see darker, darker liquor. Again, it's just opening. So this is still, yeah, I'm getting that swirl. Can I take this camera? That's gonna be a bit of a mess, but let's try to do this. Right, I love this swirl, so I'm gonna see if I can do this. So apologies, this is a, Ooh, cables, cables. Um, all right, I'll tell you what we do. We can do this, we can do this. I'm plugging that one. Can you see all of those steam? It looks like steam, but it's actually micro fine bubbles, which are sitting on the surface, so levitating. So the, the, the hot tea rises and uh, creates um, these microfine bubbles, which then levitate. And anyway, you can see the color of the liquor here, might as well, since I'm here. Ooh, it's like got a red note to it as well. It's like got a, like a crimson, crimson, orange, brown, red note. Um, yeah, you can see through the light, it probably looks very different to how it does in the main camera. Anyway, apologies for the chaos, but I thought I would show you that I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Uh, let me set up this camera, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I uh, think everything's on. So if you didn't catch those little micro droplets, then I'll try and put a picture up here so you can see it more clearly. Those are little micro droplets that are formed um, from the condensation of the hot tea uh, steam sort of rising and forming these little micro drop droplets. Uh, I think they're sort of around 10 microns. So around the same sort of particle size as matcha tea um, and they levitate on top and there's some discussion from the from the papers that I read about whether or not it's to do with static or not but they also sort of disappear and reappear and create all these mad shapes on top of the tea really really beautiful hypnotic uh, effect and you catch it sometimes and when you catch it well that's why I got excited I wanted to film it um, but it tends to work best if you're outside on a cold day and you're drinking um, hot tea on a cold day and you get that a uh, very distinct effect anyway a bit of a distraction. Cheers, everybody. Third infusion. Oh, smooth, silky. Uh, the sensation in the mouth afterwards is super refreshing, cooling, um, comfortable. When you breathe, you're getting a lovely cooling sensation. It has a dry to juicy finish, but a lot of teas do. This has a particularly refreshing, juicy, cleansing, cooling feel in the mouth. Oh, all right, let's smell that empty Gongdao Bay. 
Oh, what a tea. Let's have a sniff. Mmm, that dark baked croissant is now really coming forwards. Yeah, that what I said before. Cherry jam and dark baked croissant. Just rip it open, spread it on top. Yeasty, doughy, bready, little bit darker and, um, and that cherry note coming through. I'm going to now sit, roll through infusions, probably many, many infusions, just to try to figure out how many infusions this brings and to give you my final tasting notes on a spectacular Nugberry. So this tea is officially immortal. Uh, it just does not give in. This cat has moved three times along there, so I got the tea pet so I could do the counting. I don't trust when I'm doing more than 10 uh, infusions that I can count correctly. We're on infusion number 15. You can see the color of the liquor, so this is actually a combination of 14 and 15 here. Look at the color of this liquor. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much darker than the first infusion. The taste is remarkable, very, very consistent. All of those beautiful cherry notes and blue and, and black currant notes and blackberry notes are still coming through. Red grape as well. I'm also picking up a spice that comes through through later infusions. So like sandalwood is what I picked up um, and um, a little bit of sort of malt loaf as well. So raisins and malt and, and again that bready note, but spiced. Mm. Take a look at these nugs. They are not stopping. I mean, that is still solid. <laughs> 15 infusions in and it feels like this tea and that's all of them. All of these nugs, these three nugs here. This is the most efficient tea Ever. I mean, okay, so three nugs probably is around nine grams or something, maybe a bit more, you know, so a good hefty portion, but still, I mean, it's unbelievable how, uh, how solid they are. They're just starting to pry, you can start to prize them open a little bit. It is amazing the longevity of this tea. Uh, Lao Cha To is always impressive in terms of its longevity but this is just next level. Um, and so, you know, I would suggest that you can get definitely 20 plus infusions, probably 30 plus infusions out of this. Definitely you would, you will probably want to stop drinking it and save it for the next day rather than uh, try to test the boundaries. I certainly am sort of hitting the limit at 15 infusions. I could probably go for a bit more. I'm sure that um, Celine is going to be uh, uh, um, raring to go with this one. And by the way, the reason why this one that we tasted before is broken up is because we actually started to open it up just to sort of um, see the, the consistency of the leaves. That, so the, that one was physically opened. This is just allowing the water, really honestly, it is feels very, very solid. So there's plenty, plenty more infusions to go. An immortal tea, one that you can save for the next day for sure. Nugberry, uh, I absolutely adore this tea. I can tell you right now that I would be amazed if this tea is not in my uh, top 10 teas of 2021 in terms of how often I'm gonna be drinking this tea. This is going to be the daily driver. The body sensation, a nice, bright, clean energy, cooling sensation in the mouth and the, and, and the lungs, um, and definitely digestive. I can feel it working in my stomach, not in a sort of like uh, overactive way, in a more sort of settling, calming, like it's going to um, be the best drink for um, uh, drinking with meals to, to make sure that you have a nice, uh, nice calm sensation in the belly um, after say a heavy fatty meal, for example, an amazing digestive, as all right poor teas are, but certainly I can feel it quite strongly here. Nugberry. Top 10 teas of the year, potentially. I am totally in love with this tea. Uh, a fruit bomb of a ripe tea. If you love your ripe teas, you're gonna want this. 
if you are wanting to get into ripe teas, this is one of the best ripe teas that I can remember tasting. An incredible tea. Highly, highly recommended. Lao Cha Tho 2012. I am starting to feel a little bit tea drunk here. Just a lot of tea in a short period of time. Oh, amazing. I'm sure that this tea is gonna be a favorite for many of you out there. Oh, I can't even speak. So I'm gonna sign off now. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I am a slightly woozy Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.